Five miles north of the airport, Dublin Airport, lies a house in among the greenery and in among the ruins, the remains of what was once one of the great houses of Ireland, what was Turvey House. Turvey House was the home of Lord Barnwell, a name which also has faded in time into the mists. But he was one of the great Anglo-Norman families and his history and his time in Ireland dated back 750 years to the Norman invasion. The annals of the Four Masters recorded the death of Lord Turvey. And one of the things that it doesn't mention is that Lord Turvey was father to one of the greatest architects that Ireland ever produced. That was the Gubbon Sayer. Samuel Beckett mentioned Turvey in his poem Sanny's One and, and when he described a walk through Fingal. All the live long way this day, sweet showers from Portran to the seashore, sad swans of Turvey. In 1215, when the Barnwells came uh, with the Norman invasion, they built a convent in Grace Dew. 500, for 500 years, that convent was used exclusively for the daughters of the Anglo-Norman royalty of the Pale. In 1527, Henry VIII set himself on a course which was to change not just his life, but Grace Dew and many parts of Ireland. He decided to apply for a divorce from Catherine of Aragon. He applied to Rome and was turned down. When that happened, he took matters into his own hands. He closed all the monasteries and churches in Ireland and in England. And for longer than many places, Grace Jew still survived. But on the 26th of October, 1539, the inevitable happened. The convent was closed down, the nuns and priests were mercilessly evicted and Sir Patrick Barnwell, Solicitor General and Royal Servant of the Crown, bought the Priory and lands for 608 pounds, 18 shillings and fourpence. In 1565, his son Christopher demolished the monastery and used it to build Turvey House. His monument is uh, in Lusk, it still stands, where he's lying alongside his wife, Marion Shawl, who was the grandmother of Oliver Plunkett. As well as demolishing the buildings in Grace Dew and building Turvey House, Christopher Barnwell, in his short life, managed also to become leader of parliament and to father five sons and 15 daughters. Turvey House passed to, to Christopher's son, Patrick, and it was during his tenure that one of the most famous incidents of the house happened. Hugh O'Neill, Earl of Tyrone, fell in love with Patrick Barnwell's sister-in-law, Mabel Bagnall. The family were bitterly opposed to this union, partly because O'Neill was a nationalist uh, with Republican leanings, and he was also a twice-married divorcee. But Hugh O'Neill, was not about to take no for an answer. On the evening of the 3rd of August, 1591, he quietly slipped out of Turvey House after a meal, and he rode through the night to Drumcondra with Mabel and got married. The couple were very different in their ways. Hugh O'Neill was a, an Irish warrior. Mabel was English and used to the life of the landed gentry. So, life cannot have been easy for her, and she died four and a half years later, in January 1596. Two years later, Mabel's brother, Henry Bagnall, was killed by O'Neill's forces. And then eventually, O'Neill was defeated in 1601 and fled the country in what was known as the Flight of the Earls. The 1600s were an unsettled period in Irish history 
which culminated in the Rising of 1641. Before the Rising, Nicholas Barnwell was given a royal commission to resist, kill and slay all traitors at his discretion. Rather than carry out this license to kill and slay his neighbours and his friends, he slipped out of Turvey House and he fled to Wales. In 1691, all their estates, the Barnwell estates, were confiscated and it took many years to have them reinstated. In time, the Barnwell power and influence declined. The house changed hands a few times and finally, in 1987, it was considered to be in a dangerous state of repair. While Newbridge, across the road from it, was restored, as well as Malahide and Ardgillen, which were turned into major tourist attractions, Turvey House was quietly demolished overnight, and nothing remains now except the grey stones hidden in among the trees. <laughs>